All right, guys, welcome back to your last lecture of the semester. We're going to be going over lab 16, gestation and contraception. <clears throat> Starting off today, we're going to skip the anatomy of the sperm. It's pretty easy. There's only four terms, and they kind of speak for themselves. We're going to start with our talk on oocytes. Starting off with the corpus luteum. It's this kind of flower-looking structure on the inside of the ovary. This cell just outside of the ovary is going to be a secondary oocyte and that layer, that kind of greenish blue layer around the secondary oocyte is going to be our corona radiata. Looking up here, we're going to start looking at a couple of these pictures just for the purposes of clarity. Once a secondary oocyte has entered the two cell or four cell stage, that is going to be called a blastomere. Anything more than that, so eight cells or more, is going to be a marula. And then once we have clear and defined structures, which we'll go over in a second, we have a blastocyst. So for example, in this structure, <clears throat> this bundle of cells is going to be the inner cell mass. This is what is going to eventually become the fetus. This space in between is going to be the blastocele, and then the layer on the outside is gonna be the trophoblast. So once you can see an inner cell mass and a blastocele, that's how you know you now have a blastocyst. We're gonna skip the conversation on trimesters, term, preterm, all that stuff because it's mostly definition based and that's something you guys probably had exposure to before or you can just learn very quickly. We're going to begin talking about some of the more nitty gritty stuff with the <coughs> extra embryonic anatomy. Starting off with our umbilical cord. It's this kind of pink looking structure right here. Umbilical arteries and veins, you guys can see on a different model. Be really careful. Remember, this is one of the two exceptions to the typical artery vein rule. Veins carry oxygenated blood in this case, and arteries carry deoxygenated blood in this case. So it's kind of a little flipped. Next up, we have the amniotic cavity, which is all that space that you'd imagine. That layer of the amniotic cavity is going to be your amnion. And on the outside, you have your chorion. The slides are really, really helpful for this, so definitely take some time to look at this when you get the chance. Very, very helpful stuff. The last couple that I really want to make sure I go over with you guys very clearly is the three deciduas. So you have three of those layers, the decidua basalis, the decidua parietalis, and the decidua capsularis. The way I like to remember this is the decidua basalis connects both the mother and the fetus, and then you can see it splits right here. When it splits, the layer closest to the kid is the capsularis, the layer closest to the parent is the parietalis. So basalis both, capsularis kid, parietalis parent. Hopefully that helps you out. And then over here in our chorion, we have chorionic villi. Which you can kind of see in your lab manual, all those little villi, those orange structures projecting out are going to be your chorionic villi. And again, your amnion is going to be the layer inside your amniotic cavity where all that amniotic fluid is going to be. All right. Last up, we're going to have a little quick conversation about some of the contraceptive methods, but we're not going to spend too much time talking about it. You guys will need to know the differences between non-hormonal methods, hormonal methods, and permanent methods. A vasectomy is the permanent form of contraception for a male where they snip the vas deferens. A tubal ligation, <clears throat> or getting your tubes tied, um, is where they will sever the uterine tubes and cauterize them. You do need to write tubal ligation for that. And then also intrauterine tube coil placement. For some of the methods, we have a normal typical male condom. We have a lambskin condom as well. We have diaphragms. We have a couple of them to kind of give you an idea of what those look like. 
This is an example of an IUD. I forget what else we have in here. This collection of contraceptive methods is uh, quite interesting. Your TA will probably have a lot of fun explaining some of these to you. We have vagus, or vaginal contraceptive films. We have female condoms. And the rest you will have the chance to look at in your lab. Well, actually, there's one more I want to show you. The cervical cap. Be really careful. A lot of my students often get this. Mo this is one of the more most missed questions on the practical because a lot of people mix up the difference between diaphragms and cervical caps. So this is an example of a diaphragm. This is a cervical cap. All right, guys, that concludes your last lecture for Biology 224. Definitely take some time, look at all your information, supplementary material, all that good stuff that we've provided, and good luck on your practicals and quizzes.